Hey guys, happy Tuesday. It's Talkie Tuesday. How are you? Hi, this is Dory Patrick coming at you from my messy art studio. I thought I'd give you another vantage point this time. My lovely, small, but mighty plant collection here behind me. <laughs> and kind of through the window, there you can see our new picket fence that we had put in last week. Yay! So, I said my name, didn't I? Hi, I'm Dory Patrick. I am a mixed media artist in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and I try to uh, jump on YouTube once a week and just kind of share little tidbits about um, a, a working artist's life. And um, you know what I'm finding by doing these video vlogs is I don't know where the weeks go. I know I said that last week. I, the time is just flying by. I can't even. But anyway, glad to see you. Welcome, welcome. Um, I don't have a whole lot to report this week. I have been um, getting after canvases and panels. Oh, drinking my badass coffee and wearing my little badass badge because I feel like I need to channel that energy today. Uh we have had day after day after day of cool, rainy weather. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm over it. I am ready for some, uh, I'm ready for some sunshine and some warm weather. And so is Callie Mae. And I need to mow the lawn. I missed my opportunity during that one dry day that we had, I don't know when, uh, so now the grass is really long, but it's nice and green, so we'll take that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've just been um, working away on canvases and panels. Um, I'm working on a little idea that I may have shown you a few weeks ago in my sketchbooks um, of uh, kind of deconstructing things. So I'm currently focusing on flower bouquets. So I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm painting and drawing um, flower bouquets and then deconstructing them and piecing them together with other things. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I'm still kind of in the playing around phase and um, sometimes when I'm in that phase, I just, I need to just not share for a while and just focus on on the project at hand but so things are coming along like I said we got our fence in um, so that actually was the last item on our fix-it list from the damage from the derecho that was almost two years two years ago I mean wow yeah and like I said it wasn't a huge damage but it needed to be done and we're glad to have that behind us so we're just onward and upward now. <laughs> uh, there's always something. Well, anyway, today uh, I thought that I would share with you my favorite go-tos for drawing and doodling. Yeah, mostly drawing and doodling, some writing sometimes. Um, my favorite products. Um, we're going to talk about some pencils. We're going to talk about some pens. Uh, some of these are new things that I'm trying out, so I don't quite um, have them all figured out yet. And by I am by no means an expert on any of these things. These are just things that I grab on a daily basis when I'm working in my, whether it's journals, panels, uh, sketchbooks, um, these are some of my favorite things. So I thought I you might like to see those and I'm going to do my best to pronounce everything correctly. <laughs> Good luck with that. And I'm gonna try to share some links so that in the description so that you can find uh, some of these things if you're interested in purchasing them. 
These are by no means things that you absolutely have to have to be creative. Um, they are just things that I particularly love to use. I'm always on the hunt for a new fun thing to try to just kind of jazz up my art making experience a little bit. And um, hopefully this will do the same for you. So I am going to pause here and I'm going to switch the camera around and uh, we'll be looking down at the tabletop. Um, and I will uh, show you some of my favorites. I hope you enjoy and uh, see you back here at the table in just a sec. Okay. Hey guys, we're back. Um, all right, well, let's just get back to it here. I brought over those two sketchbooks that I shared with you a couple of weeks ago. One has watercolor paper in it and another one has just regular um, sketch book paper in it. And um, so I thought hopefully um, I can do little demos for these. So let me just find uh, like the back of couple of these pages and uh, we'll do some playing around and you guys it is such a dark day here I'm hoping that the lighting will be all right I'm gonna try to edit this and make it a little brighter if I can but um, hopefully you can see okay <laughs> okay so first we're gonna start with pencils um, I'm going to share my four favorites. Um, there are three um, regular graphite pencils and some colored pencils that I, I love to use. So my favorite graphite pencil is this one. And it is the Stabilo All. And I don't know if that's going to focus for you or not. To below all. I'll put links um, in the description for these. This has become my go-to pencil. I use it all the time and when I restock these babies I buy them by the dozen. I love the dark um, I love the dark confident mark that it gives me. I don't know if that lighting is showing that to you but what's really cool about these is they are also water soluble so we'll grab some watercolor paper in here I'll just do a little mark so you can take a little bit of water whoa sorry and activate it and look at that. And so you can do some really cool um, smears and move it around. Um, you could use this um, to do shading. I love that option. So when I'm doing some really loose um, free drawings, I love this and I love leaving it as is. Um, if you want your marks to be permanent with this pencil, so some people would think this might be a downfall for this type of pencil, you do need to use a fixative to hold it because if you are working on your piece, la da 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 da, and uh, decide to seal it or run a brush back over it, it's going to do this. It's going to um, reconstitute. And it is not permanent even when you get it wet. So you can even re-wet it and move it around even more. So it is not a permanent pencil, but I love the mark. It gives me so much that I take that extra step and use a fixative to seal it. And there are all kinds of uh, pencil and charcoal fixatives on the market that you can you can play around with but so stabilo all that is my favorite go-to pencil of all time um i also really love um a black wing and there are all kinds of um black wing pencils out there 
Um, I love them all. Um, their distinguishing feature is this sort of rectangular shaped eraser. And it's just a good overall um, great mark making tool. I, I'm pretty rough on my tools. I love a, a strong line. I press kind of hard and I love getting that uh, mark with it. So this is a great overall drawing pencil. This is great for journaling. There are a lot of writers who um, write in their journals and in their notebooks with this pencil. It's a good sketching pencil too. Um, so I like, and Hubby really likes these too. He uses them for note taking and stuff in his office. They can be a little pricey. Um, but you can find them in fine stationery stores. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find these online in packs of like six or 12. Um, and like I said, I don't, I don't know all the different kinds. I just recognize the name. I know it's going to be a good pencil. And so I grab it and I've never been disappointed. So Blackwing pencils. Um, and then moving on. Oh, one more graphite. This isn't really a pencil, but it's a really fun, um, it's like a graphite stick. And I think that's pronounced Lyra. That's what I call it. I'm not sure if that's right, but it is a, an entire stick of water soluble graphite. So you can do a lot of the same things that you do with the Stabilo, but you can have a thicker line. So if I'm working on big canvases or a big piece, I will grab these because it will give me that, that thicker mark that, that is more appropriate for a larger piece of art. Um, and the numbers are talking about the, uh, I don't know what the technical term is, but basically hardness to softness. So the 2B gives me a very nice pencil line. The 6B gives me thicker, uh, darker. So it's a little bit of a softer lead. And the 9B, which I think probably is my favorite, really gives you um, a nice thick, oh, and I'm sorry, you're shaking. I'll try not to shake the table. <laughs> um, yeah, so 2B, 6B, and 9B. I think these, this company also has some, um, I want to say maybe some charcoal sticks too. I'm not really sure, but, um, these have been really fun. So again, water soluble, so you can activate it um, with a little bit. See, in this paper, it's not really moving a whole lot. You can kind of stir it up. That, the watercolor paper tends to move a little bit more. Um, so that's another option. I love that chunky feel. Um, there's something kind of fun and kind of loosens you up to hold that chunky um, tool in your hand. So Lyra, um, it's called a graphite pastel. Okay. Um, and then colored pencils. Um, I have an all-time favorite for my colored pencils, the ones I always grab. I mean, I use these just about every day in all of my mixed media pieces, the Prismacolor Premier series. You can buy these in sets. You can buy them individually, um, both online and I think in the stores. I'm pretty sure I've bought these individually at Blick when I was like short on a color. So they give you, I mean, they're just this wonderful, they lay down a lot of color. They're kind of a softer lead. So, and like I said, I am a hard, I'm hard on my pencils. So I have to sharpen mine a lot because I really dig in there. But they're really great for layering and um, 
playing around. Yeah, I love these for adding details at the end. Um, so if I do a painting of flowers, I'll come back and just do last minute little little marks with these pencils. But um, these are my go-to all the time in, in my artwork and in my sketchbooks. So those are, again, Prismacolor Premier. And another one that I've recently been um, kind of into is this Derwent Ink Tense pencil. And I only bought, a, I think I bought two or three of this Indian ink color because I really just wanted to play around with uh, what I could do with it first. And I think this is a water-soluble one too. Yes, isn't that yummy? I mean, that's just, and that's intense color. So you can see, I mean, that is great. See, oops, <laughs> I told you I push hard. Yeah, love that. Now, the one thing I can't speak to about this one is whether this is permanent when it dries or if you can reconstitute it. I wanna say it's pretty permanent, but I would say err on the side of caution with a fixative if you really want to um, preserve some marks before you seal or varnish your piece. So yeah, super fun. I need to get some more uh, colors in that. So that one again is, oh, and there's paint on, on my pencil. Derwin Ink Tents, and that color is Indian ink, uh, which is sort of a brownie black, which I like. I like that a lot. That's a good neutral, neutral color. So let's see. Have I forgotten anything in the pencil category? I don't think so. So let's move on. Excuse me. I'm going to grab my pens. And we'll just, we'll keep on moving here. So here is, um, you know, you can't go wrong having just any old ballpoint pen on hand. I think um, those can be just as valuable as those, as those fancy pens. So I really, like if I get pens at hotels or whatever, I keep them and I use them. They're great for doodling, um, especially frees you up. Um, because they're just not precious. You're not afraid to use them. So dig in there with some ballpoint pens. Um, I like a thicker nib, a stronger line. So whoops, I have come to really love these. So this is um, Ink Brand, I-N-C. This is an R2 roller ball, and it's a 0.7. Uh, nib, which I could even go a little, a little fatter nib, um, cause I like a, a broad line, but I've done a lot of little sketches with this pen and I really love it. In fact, this one's pretty old and I think I might be getting down to the bottom, <laughs> the bottom of the ink and you can buy these in packs. I think packs of six or 12, either on Amazon or or wherever you buy office supplies. So that's a good sketching pen. Um, I don't know exactly what kind of ink that is. It seems a little like a gel ink. Um, very opaque and a good strong line. And it dries fairly quickly. So, yeah, so that's that. And then I also have one in blue. Um, this is a 0.5 tip which is a little finer than that black one. But, whoops, here we go. There's that blue. And this is fun to doodle with and journal with too. So again, ink rollerball. This one's ink precision. Um, oh, and then this one, I love this one. This is the Sakura Pigma Sensei. And this is the one point nib, which is a bold line. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. 
and I'm kind of using it on its side, but you can get a finer line by holding it up um, with just the tip straight down. Bold black lines. I love that when you want something to really, really pop. And it just flows. Love that pen. I buy these by, by the pack as well. <laughs> okay, and then a couple of new ones that I picked up at a local um, stationery store, which I'm enjoying. I'm still learning where and how I want to use them, but I thought I'd show them to you. This is Penko. It's Permanent Writer. This one is green, and it's got quite a fine nib, but it gives a a nice bold line and these tend to well that one didn't leak too much depending on the paper I think you need some strong paper for this one um, I did notice that it did bleed through in a couple of sketches that I did with it um, this reminds me a little bit of a sharpie fine point if that makes sense and it's alcohol based so it's permanent once you lay down the lines. And then this other one I picked up um, not long ago is a Marvy calligraphy pen. And this is the 2.0. So calligraphy pens have sort of this um, angle. It's, you know, it's like a flatter nib. It's not a round tip. Um, so you can angle it. I'm, I'm not interested in calligraphy, but I am interested in drawing with something that has kind of a different shape nib. And it's kind of fun to color with it too. And I believe this is pretty permanent ink. So I'm still, we're still becoming friends, this one. Figuring out what I want to do with it. Um, oh, and we can't forget, my latest favorite is this bamboo dip pen. Now, this has been um, just so much fun to play with. Um, I got it through Blick, and they're pretty inexpensive. And I think this is the medium tip, but you know, it's a dip pen, so it's exactly what it says it is. You uh, dip the pen, and I like to give it a little, little tap, and then drawing with the dip pen. And you can really get some cool effects. You could also not tap it and have more ink, you know. Um, coming off of a nib there, but, and I love to just mess around and see what kind of marks I can get. Yeah, super fun. And this ink I'm using is, um, magic, magic color ink. I have all kinds of inks that I love to play with, this. but this is a great way to loosen up your drawing and just find some new new mark making um, add to your vocabulary right okay so there's that and then next up paint pens I'm gonna show you my favorite paint pens ever in the world are Posca. And I know most of you probably have these and know about these but I can't sing their praises enough. Posca pens are just the best. They, I use them in my finished artwork. I use them in my journals. Um, they are just so much fun. And once, when you get them, you have to do a little pumping to get that paint down to the nib and then they are just good to go. And the paint is so opaque. Uh, I find these really great to layer with. Um, and you can layer on top of them without any problems. They just are amazing. This is the large bullet uh, tip. 
and yeah so much fun so Posca pens uh, and they come in you know all kinds of all different nibs and there's even some glitter ones that you can buy online I think now even they're becoming a little more available in the stores too. the glitter pens they used to be kind of hard to, hard to find but glitter pens I mean come on yeah and I know a lot of you um, probably also love the uh, uh, jelly roll pens and I do like jelly roll pens the gel the skinny little gel pens um I just don't reach for those as much with the kind of art that I do um but still love them and then the other marker that I love are Tombos and I know I've been talking about these a lot um and these are the dual tip brush on one end a smaller nib on the other end they are wonderful the fine tip is great for drawing or filling in small details and the brush tip is just juicy I mean look at that and I love how it layers um, I've been having a lot of fun with these in my books lately yeah Good stuff. Tombow markers. Okay, and we're almost there, friends. Um, the last mark making tool, and probably the one I I reach for the most, <laughs> and they are scruffy looking because I really I reach for them all the time. Caran d'Ache Neo Color Twos. So these are water soluble crayons. They are like a highfalutin crayon that you can uh, introduce water to and move it around on a page. I'll show you. The other thing that I have are Caran d'Ache Neo Color Ones. Now the ones are not water soluble. They are permanent when you mark with them. So you cannot move them around uh, once you set them down. Sometimes that's what I want. Sometimes I'm just doing finishing touches on a piece and I don't want to mess around with it anymore. So, so I'll use the permanent ones. These are a harder crayon. They are not as soft and creamy as the twos. That's probably why the twos are a little more popular because they just, they're a little easier to work with. But I will say I still, I love the ones as well just for different things and I just don't reach for them as much but it's a let me see if I can this might be a good page it's still a juicy mark like and it can hold up to how rough I am with it so that's the Neo Color one and then Neo Color twos can be activated with water and you can move them around. So we'll do a little swatch here and then get some water. And you can see, look at that. It just picks up and starts moving around. Now, once you get uh, your crayon, once you get it the way you like it, this does need a fixative because it can, when you varnish your piece or activate it again with a wet medium, it will reconstitute and start moving around again. So once you get it where you want it, you need to use a fixative to hold it in place, but so fun. Those are absolutely, I go to those every single day and I love them so much that I don't even, like there are, there are tiny little nibs, <laughs> tiny little stubs that I save because I can't, I have to use up every little bit and I do I go through these like crazy but yeah so I think I covered everything you know what that guys there are lots of other things I have around in the studio because I do like to experiment and play around but right now these are my current favorites meaning I grab these just about every day on some capacity with my work so yeah, that was kind of fun. Thanks for joining me. 
Hey guys, thanks so much. Um, I hope I didn't jabber on too long. I think I jabbered for at least 20 minutes, but um, hopefully that uh, gave you a little inspiration maybe to uh, look into trying something new. Who knows? Um, thanks again for joining me this week. It was great to see you and um, I'll see you again uh, here next week, I hope. And uh, happy Mother's Day if you're celebrating. And uh, if it's a hard day for you, I wish you peace. I'll see you soon.